Hi there, and welcome to my online chemistry course right here on YouTube. My name is Jeremy Krug, and if you're new here, this channel has everything that you need for both first year high school chemistry and AP chemistry. So take a look around. If you like what you see, I, I hope you give me a thumbs up and that you subscribe to my channel as well. In this video, we're taking a very introductory look into what chemistry is all about. Now, when we say what is chemistry, chemistry is defined as the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. And so when we use the word matter, we're talking about anything that has mass and takes up space. So if something has mass, that means it has material in it. That means that we can put it on a scale and weigh it. Uh, if it takes up space, well, that would, that would basically apply to just about anything that uh, you can put your hands on and, and hold in your hand, and sometimes things that even you can't hold in your hand. For example, a book, a cell phone, a TV, uh, a house. These are all examples of matter. They take up space. What about air? Is air considered matter? Does air take up space? Absolutely it does. If you don't believe me, take a balloon and blow into that balloon and you'll see that that uh, air, once it's trapped in the balloon, starts to take up space, doesn't it? So chemistry is the study of matter. And one of the most exciting things that we talk about in chemistry would be the changes that matter undergoes. In this course, we'll talk about physical changes, but we'll also talk about chemical changes, things we often call chemical reactions. That's the fun part of chemistry, where we talk about things that are burning, or rusting, or digesting, or in some other way, reacting. That's the fun part of chemistry. Now, in this video, we're also going to talk about the five main branches of chemistry. Now, I need to let you know that these are not the only branches of chemistry. In this video, we're just talking about some introductory topics, the five main branches of chemistry that a student might study if they were to major in chemistry in their undergraduate courses in college. There are other branches. We'll talk about those later on. But the first branch that I want you to know about is organic chemistry. Now, organic chemistry is all about the study of carbon-containing compounds. Now, what does that mean? Well, of all the elements on the periodic table, there's one element that really stands out, and that's carbon. Why is that the case? Because carbon is found in everything that's alive and ever has been alive. And so organic chemistry basically involves the building blocks of life. Now, we can go on and talk more about the chemistry of life later on, but organic chemistry is very important. As far as we know, on our planet anyway, there are more compounds that contain carbon than there are compounds that don't contain carbon. So that element, carbon, is very essential to our planet. Now, the second branch I have for you here is inorganic chemistry. Inorganic chemistry is the study of substances that do not contain carbon. So we're talking about uh, very often things that are uh, used for building uh, materials. Uh, there are lots of substances and, and compounds that do not have carbon, and this would be the realm of inorganic chemists. The third branch I have for you here is analytical chemistry. As you look at the word analytical, you might notice the word analyze in there. And that's basically what analytical chemists do. They're studying ways to analyze the composition of materials. And so over time, what these analytical chemists are doing is they are thinking of ways to analyze, and they can analyze just about anything. For example, if you have ever uh, had uh, water to drink out of a faucet, perhaps you uh, have city water, uh, running water in your home, well, in many areas, that water has to be tested by an analytical chemist, and they're required to give you a report of all the pollutants that are in that water. An analytical chemist is in charge of basically analyzing what's in that water. Or if you know of someone who's ever had to take a drug test. Well, in that case, some, sometimes it's blood, sometimes it's uh, urine, it could be someone's breath. In the case of a breathalyzer, we're talking about analyzing the composition of something. So analytical chemists, all about analyzing the composition of things. The next branch of chemistry is physical chemistry. And in physical chemistry, we're studying the ways substances behave. And so very often we notice that different substances behave in different ways. Here's an example of this. If you've ever taken 
a glass jar and placed water into that jar and, and then you place that jar in the freezer, the water in the jar is going to freeze and you may find that the jar cracks or shatters in the process of doing that. And you might wonder, why is that the case? Why is it that water, when it freezes, expands? Most of us know that when something gets cold, it contracts, doesn't it? So why is water and ice the opposite of that? Well, this is the type of thing that a physical chemist would study. Why do certain substances behave in the way they do? So we have that fourth branch. And then the fifth branch that I have for you today is biochemistry. This involves the chemistry of life. And so specific compounds like DNA and RNA, all those proteins, those amino acids that are required in order to have life, uh, all of the chemical compounds found in your blood, found in every cell of your body, this is the type of thing that a biochemist would study. Now, once again, like I said, these are the five main branches of chemistry. There are other branches as well that uh, we could talk about if we wanted to, uh, things like uh, computational chemistry and nanochemistry. These are all other branches, but these are the five main branches. Hope you learned something from this video. If so, please smash that like button. I hope to see you in the next video where we can learn some more chemistry together.